manifesting my victory in Christ Jesus. Manifesting my victory in Christ Jesus. And I showed us from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The Bible says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And I told us yesterday that that scripture means anything that has God's support is, is definitely going to overcome. And to overcome is to prevail over. I told us, I said, every child of God, you are born again, you have a winning destiny. You must understand that the devil and his agents are not supposed to prevail over you. And when we talk about winners, we talk about people that will face challenge, but will eventually overcome. Tell your neighbor, I'm a winner. Say it like you understand it. Now, we now look at, we ask a question that I also answered, that why is it that several children of God still suffer defeat, even when uh, we are shown that we have a winning destiny? Why? Is it that several children of God still experience defeat when there is a winning a destiny over us? And we answer the question by saying from Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that one of the reasons why several children of God suffer defeat is because of the lack of what? Knowledge. Hosea 4 6 says, my people are destroyed for one thing, for lack of knowledge. Now, and we explained that no matter how born again you are, if you lack knowledge, you will still struggle. You will suffer several dis destructions. Then we now went further to answer. That was what we studied the first day. What should you have knowledge of as a child of God? I said, you must have the knowledge of who you are in Christ. Now, and we saw it from Galatians 3.26 that we are all sons of God, children of God, by our faith in Christ. Now, which means the moment you are born again, who are you? You are not God's slave. And she in alone. Who are you? You are children of God. In fact, the Bible calls you sons of God. Hallelujah. That was what we studied the first day. And I told us that stop seeing yourself as a slave. You must start seeing yourself as God's own children. Then we went further to say, what is your, uh, sorry, that as God's children, you have commitments to God and God has commitments to you because we have what we call a parental relationship with God. God is our parents. The moment we become, uh, he's, our dad, he's our dad and mom, the moment we became born again. So what is God's expectation from you? I told us on Friday, on Wednesday, that God expects you to live your life in order to glorify him. The expectation in the natural of every father from their children is for their children to make them proud. Abby, that's what we fathers are looking for. We want to be the father of the children that, you know, of the child that they will say is the best in school, has good character in the society. You'll be beating your chest, you'll be saying, that's my son, that's my daughter. And that is God's expectation towards us. So if somebody say, what is your commitment towards God? Your commitment towards God is that you must live to please him. And I said again on Wednesday, that, sorry, on, it was on Tuesday when we started, that God's commitment towards you is three. We took it from the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, from verse 9 to 15. I said, number one, the Bible says, give unto us this day our daily bread. That it is God's responsibility to provide. God is to provide for you. We also saw verse 11 that says, lead us not into temptation. It is God's responsibility to give you divine direction. Then we also said, uh, uh, and deliver us from evil. It is God's responsibility to protect you. Now, that was what we studied on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we talked about another knowledge you should have. Knowledge of who your enemy is, how he operates, and your weapon of warfare against him. Now, don't forget, and I told us yesterday that your enemy is not any human being. And since you okay, yeah, you call it tie. But that's he, you tap when you be call it tie. Now, that we all should come to this understanding. We saw several scriptures. I can't go back to it. It's on Facebook. You can go and listen to it. We saw several scriptures, and we're able to prove that we have one enemy. All others are channels. That's why, if you are the type that pray, ah, 
kun le o gbodo kun ni o iwo lo nta ku mi wa ku 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 na si kun le ba ku emi esu to lo kun le to fi nba eja yen a kuro nu kun le to ti padu apa yen a tun lo wo nu mayo wa na iwo na wa wo ye yan ti wa fadu apa mayo wa o iwo na tin gbogun ti ku ti mayo wa ba tun ku emi esu yan ko nu mayo wa a tun lo wo nu kende that's why i told us yesterday the devil wants us to fall into the realm of unforgiveness and keeping of malice. That's why he makes us to think that human beings are our enemies. No. If anybody is fighting you, there's a spirit of the devil inside that person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't look at that person that is fighting you. Tie Shubafili succeed. To swedi, eni to jeke, kundari ji. Tabi wa wabes ni yudi. Ah, mini ki wamo, olo mini ki wamo, adura le ole ba. So in TV, Billy Sonny gave about Dali Jesh, what you are. They are saying Dali Jia want to shake any a damn alone now. Okay, you know, ma'am, we are doing a full and diary. Who are scriptural. So we left that realm. Our best new work, okay. Or okay. Tawa to just a tiny tati moy, the devil that is our enemy. How does he operate? And I told us if you understand your enemy's operational system, you can conquer him. Study your enemy and you will cage him. Now, I love football. I played football in my young days. I'm still young. In the days when I say I have time, let me not say my young days. One of the things we do, if we have an opponent, you know what our coach will do? Our coach will go and watch the match of that opponent. I must study match one. Who are their strikers? Who are their image makers? Their playmakers? There are, there are players that are playmakers. If you catch them, you have caged them a team. Then the coach will now come and say, you know what? I have studied that team. Okay, this is how to do. You can study your enemy, the devil, and know how to operate. And I said he operates using three forms. What's number one? Sin. To ba ti fe mu omo lorun akoko ju on to da bi anfani sugbon ese lo wa ma wa nwaju e. To ba ti dese bayi o ti sileku fun satani lati wole. Two, we talked about fear. He creates an a fearful atmosphere. Ibi ti satani ba ti ri eru o ma nsise. Edomi, on to fe pa gan, o to on to le pa, bo e run to ni pa kan ye o ti le ju. So he, they die of fear, not of the devil. And devil will say, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. He died of fear. That we talked about yesterday, ignorance. In fact, ignorance is the greatest killer of today's Christians. Christiani a ye u de isin, ko sin to pa wan to a inima. A kan gbe bi be li wadani ni a ke inka. On le ton she kwa kakiri. When I was still living at uh, Ifelodon Street, there was a time, once one morning, a man just came to the street and he was ringing bell. He said, ah, ori oke, okay. eh, kini kon lawa, ni e jigo. Ah, ah, eh, mi olon wa sokwe kama bonia dugbo yi, kama bonia dugbo yi, eh, mi olon ron fi, ishe kon ron she, siwa, ni a dugbo yi. And they started prophesying. The bad one, the kalukuja, the bad one, the bad one, the bad one, the bad one, the bad one. People were ah. I look at them. If this one passes, we will prophesy. If that one passes, we will prophesy. So I decided to come down. I passed. I go. I went to, 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 to his front. He didn't see me. I came back again. He didn't see me. I kept going and coming, coming. He didn't prophesy to me because I know that the spirit in him will be saying, "If you prophesy to this one, it will disgrace you." Read your Bible if you don't want to be deceived. This same time. There are so many people that are caught by their stomach. So many people run into ministry because they don't have anything to do. And some people are called, but they lack training. So but if you understand scriptures, you will be delivered from what? Deception ign and ignorance. So, and the last one we look at yesterday, that was where we stopped. The enemy also uses carelessness. It capitalizes on our carelessness. Look very well. Bible did not say pray and pray. Bible says watch and pray. So which means bo se n gbadura to laju e mi so ki ko laju nu adua o. That word watch, you know what it means? Observe the lines. Dot your i, cross your t's very well. I've shared this with you before, but because of those that are new, a young man joined our church many years ago. And I was shocked. Every Sunday, he has a new testimony to share. The first Sunday he came, he said, praise the Lord. I work in a multinational company. They have just made me the, the, the uh, deputy 
director of the company, and I have 23 branches from 23 states under me. You know, as he was sharing his testimony, I was studying him. I discovered that he always came to church with one green shirt and one black trousers. A, a manager of 23 states. The following Sunday again, he changed the, the shirt, but the black trousers was what you see. Well, well, he wore a black shirt with that same black trouser. And came up, he said, well, they have just awarded me with, a, with an official car, and uh, they said my salary has gone into six, six figures. I know the members that are, I don't know, everybody was dancing, praise God, anointing Pastor Prince Wing, she said, but Pastor Prince Wing woke up. Shokutu Bobo, you change. I knew he was going somewhere. The third Sunday he came up, he said, praise the Lord, I've been confirmed, I want to thank the Lord, I want to do a thanksgiving for all these good things. I told the people in the counting session, that is thanksgiving envelope, bring it, I want to see it. He dropped his thanksgiving envelope, dancing, and when he left, I told them to bring the envelope. You know what? It was one bill of 55 naira. A bill of 55 naira is how much? 500 naira. The manager over 20 states, fish a Thanksgiving. I knew he was going somewhere. Then the fourth Sunday, he said, praise God. Uh, I, I got to my office. They told me that I cannot use the car and, uh, until I get married. So I've made up my mind that pastor should give me any sister in the church. As he finished. The sisters in the church too were looking. They were shining their eyes. Ah, manager, yeah, oh, manager, my name, bro. Not in this church. As he finished, I sent for him, bro. He said, sir, where do you live? I said that my house is not too far. So I want to assign three people to follow you to your house. That I don't understand your testimony. I noticed that for the past four weeks you have been sharing your testimony, you've been wearing only one trousers. And you say you are a manager of 23 states. I discovered that your Thanksgiving is 55 naira of one bill. That's 500 naira. A manager of the people that I told to follow him to his house. They said he got to Arisa here and told them they should wait. He want to take something here. That was the last time we saw him. It was later we discovered he was a Muslim. He disguised to come to church to pick a Christian sister for marriage. That they said if they use marriage, they can use marriage to begin to draw sisters from church. That's why. Don't allow the devil to make you fall on the platform of what? Carelessness. Now let's go into what we have today. Today now let's look at the last part of the question. How, sorry, uh, yes, your weapon of warfare against the devil. Let's answer it. Now let's start with 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Verse 4. People don't understand what we call weapon of warfare. Listen, you cannot win a spiritual war without the necessary weapons. In your king, Bori, Ogun, Inuemi, Tiki, Bashiki, Olumi, Jati, Inuemi, so Olumi, Jati, Inuemi, ni move ke mo. Ki kan shiki ki yankan mag badua, Ogun show gogo, Atepa, Ogun adia gogo, Atepa. That is not it. Oh, I want you to understand clearly. We are teaching Second Corinthians chapter ten verse four. Those of you at the media, can can we have it on screen? I want everybody to see. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Hallelujah. Now we'll also read it from several versions. Look at this scripture clearly. It says, for the weapon of our warfare are not what? Canal. But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now let's go to the NLT Bible. Look at the NLT Bible. Because when you read Bibles like this and you use King James, you may not understand the real meanings. But NLT Use simplified English. Look at it. It says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strong goals of human reasonings and to destroy false arguments. Now, what do we use? Now, this one says, we use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapon. Now, go to the Message Bible. The Message Bible, MSG. Show us the Message Bible. MSG. That one explain it easy, very well. Now, look at this. Look at this. He said the tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. 
Can you see that this one even took us far? Now, let's go to NIV. New uh, International Version. Do we have it? Now, this was what I used. This one too says, the weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Yes. Now, do you, have you noticed that some people go to church and their pastor will say, if you are coming to church on Tuesday for prayer meeting, come with cutlass. Have you, have you had things like that before? I saw one on Facebook. The pastor said, come with any weapon. The pastor himself came with a gun. A bulazine. Double barrel. And stood on the altar. I shoot you, the enemy. It's ignorance. The, what the scripture is saying is, for spiritual warfare, you cannot use a physical weapon. I want you to understand. Though spiritual warfare has weapon, but this weapon is not physical. Where somebody will say, I slap you in Jesus' name. I slap you in Jesus' name. I slap you in Jesus' name. No, it doesn't work that way. It means that the weapons that we can use to conquer this enemy that is spiritual. You know, I've told you, the devil does not have physical body. The devil is a spirit. Now, the weapon you will use to conquer the devil is nothing physical. Like so many are doing today. Some people even bring broom to church. Oh yeah, guys, say me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, in ballet, it's okay. Oh, I got all one week ballet. Oh yeah, be machine ballet. Oh yeah, my guys, say, that is not it. Let's look at it from the Bible angle. What are the weapons of warfare in order to conquer in spiritual battle? Let's take them one after the other. We take them uh, in uh, uh, Roman figures. Let's take number one. Number one is a lifestyle of God. I come again, a lifestyle of God. This is living your life according to the word. A lifestyle of God. Now, when you live your life on the, on the, on the word of God, your enemy, the devil, will find nothing to hold against you. Now, look up. If you are fighting your enemy in the physical, fighting somebody physically, you know what the enemy is looking for? He's looking for loopholes. Loopholes. I love wrestling and I love kickboxing. Woman will go. That's why I love uh, Israel. Adesanya. He's a world champion in the featherweight. I love Kamal Usman. Usman. He's a world champion. They are Nigerians, but I'm only world champion when it comes to kickboxing. Woman will go. In fact, Ijoti. Uh, uh, Israel, Veja, over Bossy Sunday, I was praying for him. Lord, my wife was asking, why are you praying like this? I said, Israel has a match to what? A, a, a bout. So, you know, so, an, an opponent. He said, who is Israel? I said, kickboxing. You know what you look for? You look, the enemy will always be looking for a loophole. It will any pussy. That's why, if you read the Bible according to Reve Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, put it on screen. One of the, the titles, the, the workings of the devil is that the devil is the accuser. Is the accuser of brethren. Who is an accuser? An accuser is a fault finder. Show us Revelation 12, 10. That's why, when somebody is committed an offense in court, they call them accused. Now, when they say he's the accused, put him on the, in the box. You get to the box. Now, let's go. On. Now, let's read. He said, then I heard a loud voice. A loud voice in heaven. Say, now have come the salvation and the power for the, and the authority of Christ. For who? For the accuser of our brothers who accused them before our God. How many times? Day and night. That's why I say, if you don't live a life of God and you are praying, you are wasting your time. Oh, you are wasting your time because the devil is an accuser. And the Bible says he accuses them how many times? Day and night. You know what it means to accuse? She, she, and to, 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 to,
Bobo se sha won mo lomo. O ni dan wa adua e. Oluwa o ni dan wa adua e se. Se ni tun so pe, tun so pe o ma bless ni. Is this person you want to bless? This one that is not a tighter. He's an accuser. That's why your first major tool for spiritual warfare is a lifestyle of God. A lifestyle of God is like a shield, a shield of defense. Have you had this statement in courts before? When they say somebody is discharged and acquainted, you know what it means? It means that he doesn't have a case here and he doesn't have a case in another court. So you cannot bring him back to court over this issue again. We have not found anything in him. Praise God. I didn't hear you. You can do better. Now look at what Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 30. John chapter 14 and verse 30. Leva John 14 30. John 14 30. Now look at this. Jesus our Lord said, I will not speak with you much longer. Look at this. He says, for the prince of this world is what? He's coming. But he has no hold on. Can you see? Jesus is saying, he's coming oh, but he has nothing to hold. Why do you think with the rate people pray today? Go to Akinkemi Mountain. Go and see people in hundreds. Go to Togate Mountain. Come and see people in hundreds. I want you to okay. You know what you want. First time, at the last time, Timolo Suri Oke. Uri Oke Ikiri, Nimolo. King Togun, or no Ikiri, I mean, King Togun, a pata, move a ku, onu de mu. The thing was extremely hot. Ah, my leg was burning, and they say you have to remove your shoe at the base of the mountain. So when I successfully climbed, I got to the top of the mountain, I was just doing like this. I was trying to, ah, the person that was sleeping said, because I don't know. One feeling, continue on feel, I don't know. One feeling, continue on feel, I don't know. So throughout staff, I don't know. But the, most of them don't have testimony. Don't have testimony. Because I don't know. 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 The devil is an accuser of brethren and he goes to accuse you before the Lord. That's why there are no testimonies. That's why so many Christians are not winning in spiritual battles. But look at what Jesus said. He said he's coming. He has nothing to hold against me. If you live a lifestyle of God, hear me, Living according to the Bible, the enemy, the devil, will see nothing to hold against you. Let's confirm with more scriptures in Job chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. You know, we read verse 8 yesterday. But look at the benefit of the lifestyle of Job. Job chapter 1, 8 to 10. Job chapter 1, from verse 8 to verse 10. Now look at this. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Question mark. God is now responding. There is no one on earth like him. Hmm. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Verse 9. Look at Job. Uh, Satan. Satan now said, does, God, does Job fear God? For him? Satan replied. Have you not put what? A edge around him around his household, can you see that living for God has benefits? Because he was living a life of God, you know what God did? God put protection around him. Because Job was living the life of God. I have heard of cases of people, you be talking pray, where they are praying, they shot them arrows and the arrows penetrated. Why? It shows that there is a fault in their shield. A pastor friend was sharing an experience with me. He said that he has a group of four pastors, plus in making four. They were prayer warriors. So somebody now told them that there is this particular land in Ondo State. Uh, churches does not exist there. This person wants to give the land to the church. So these four brothers now, ministers now decided, we are going to that land. It's not, there's nothing wrong about that. 
So three left. But the, the other uh, uh, person that was supposed to follow them, something engaged him that day. They got to that land. They started praying. The next morning, it was their dead bodies they came to remove. Now, can I ask you a question? Is the devil mightier than God? Answer me. No. Can light prevail over darkness? No. Once you turn on this light now, darkness will move. If, if, darkness, if light will move, darkness will move. Will occupy. So it shows you that for darkness to prevail over them, something is wrong. For you to win in spiritual warfare, you need to fix your life first. Now, one more scripture. One more scripture. Uh, let's look at First John chapter three and verse twenty-two. First John chapter three and verse twenty-two. First John chapter three. And verse 22. So what's your first spiritual weapon to conquer the enemy? A life of God. Now look at this. First John 3, 22. It says, and receive from him anything we ask. Okay. Take it off from verse 21 so that we can understand it. Show us from verse 21. Thank you. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Yes. Verse 22. And receive from him anything we ask. Because of why? Why should we receive? Because we obey his commands. And do what pleases him. Can you see? The first thing you must fix is your life. The first thing is not to start praying. No. No. We have so much rated prayer as number one. Prayer is not number one. At Iwanu Adrual in church, we were at Adeniji that time. In the meeting, hot prayer meeting in the morning, a sister Lamad. Right inside the church. We said, Kokoro Kubea Adua Lukalara. As we were talking about Sini Reni, Nigba Tonika Lukumba Dwakika. And before you know it, he started pointing, Basta, you are. Ah. You know who shot an arrow? It was the friend that they came to church together. service <laughs> <laughs> because Bishop Elijah Olumu, he shared one with us. Ah, I said, these fathers have experience. On the wedding day, the husband of the bride, you know, bride was in the car. Okoya, who was dancing to the altar, he got to the front of the church, he fell down and died. <laughs> he died in the church. Sir? But not even Paris <laughs> enjoying Remember that one that uh, Prophet Ulua Femi shared with us, Baba Lashiki, when he came to our church, that two women, they don't, have, they don't used to have children in their, in their family. But eventually, after 10 years of marriage, they got pregnant. They went to the mountain for Thanksgiving. They were dancing in front of the altar of Thanksgiving when they had miscarriage in the church. Somebody now said, there is no power of God in that church. The power of God is there. But listen, the devil is an accuser of brethren. That's why you have to live right. Tell your neighbor, live right. So listen, your lifestyle of righteousness is your defense in spiritual warfare. That's your number one weapon. Your lifestyle of righteousness is your defense in spiritual warfare. That's your number one weapon. That's why the Bible says the weapon is not physical. Can we go to number two? Number two. I'll stop on number three. There's no time. Number two. Are we set? Second weapon. Consistent. Sorry. Consistently speaking 
the word of faith in expectation. Consistently speaking the word of faith in expectation. Consistently speaking the word of faith in expectation. Consistently speaking the word of faith in expectation. Now this is what we now call prayer. Now I will explain. Listen. This is when Sorry, this was exactly what God did when he created the earth. Listen, the word of faith is all about speaking in line. Look up, let me show you this. Speaking in line, in line with the written word. If you want to get God to answer you, your prayer must be in line with this. So. Do you know that praying time eh, is like you are in the natural court of law? That's why once in a while, if you are free, just walk into high court, go to high court, go to court of appeal. They, don't hold it, they, don't, they won't hold you down. Just go there, enter and sit down, and watch how they do their proceedings. You will see that. It's not that the lawyer will just come and say, uh, excuse me, my, uh, 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 your, your, what do you even call My lord, my lord, my client is not a thief. He's not a thief, oh. They just accuse him that he's a thief. He's not a thief, oh. Oh, judge, free him. No. You will see that the, 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 the lawyer will look for, he will read the constitution of Nigeria and look for how to back up his claim that his client is not a thief. Now, I've shared one with you before here. How our church was involved in a case with, a, a, with, a, a, with an agent he broke into the church premises and wanted to eject us by force that time. And we took him to court. Everything was showing that, yes, we will win the case. Then we will now sue him for damages. Then they will pay us some millions. I'm at the church. We we're happy that uh, we got the best lawyer, barrister, okay? And, you know, he, he sent somebody, delegate. But on the day, the lawyer of the man that we charged to court was to win us. He studied the documents that the police wrote, the police reports. They call it charge sheets. Police reports. He said that on the so so and so day, Mr. Lagbaja forcefully entered into God's power evangelical mission premises. And the lawyer started laughing. <laughs> I asked my lawyer, why is he laughing? He said, I don't know. And the day the man is to submit, he said, quoted. One of the Nigerian constitution of 1976. He said in, in the constitution, something could be forceful and lawful, and something could be forceful and unlawful. He said, and since it is not written, they only said, Mr. Soso and so, forcefully. They didn't say, he forcefully, he unlawfully entered. He unlaw unlawfully, forcefully entered. They didn't say it. He says, since it was only written that he forcefully entered, something could be forceful and lawful, Something could be first one unlawful. Sir, since it is not written, it shows that we have no reason sitting down. You know what the judge said? The judge said, the law act of what's here, he said, 1976. Has there been any case like that before? He said, yes. Who was the lawyer at that time? He said, it was Afeb Abala that defended the case against so and so. Go and read it. It's in the law act of 1976. I asked my lawyer. Lawyer. Lawyer said, I've never heard this before. Ah, and when the lawyer was to give the, the judge was to give his judgment he said yes I have gone through, having gone through the law act I have come to see of 1976 that something could be lawful and uh, 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 forceful and lawful and it could be forceful and unlawful since it was not indicated whether it was a, a, uh, a legal forceful entry or a legal forceful entry we have no reason sitting down Mr. Susu and so is hereby discharged and acquainted. I watched one Christian movie. A man's wife, a, a, a woman's wife was being snatched by another lady. You know how the lady prayed? She stood up in the prayer. She said, oh God, the Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Father, this is my husband. And I heard that Susu and so person have taken my husband from me. In fact, I'm talking to you now. My husband is in the house. Lord, this woman is trying to put asunder what you have joined together. Lord, arise and defend your word. Allah, no matter the day. 
ki kon se pe oluwa da oluwa se oluwa da oluwa se lolohun tin gba iro oro olorun ta ba fi ti nkan ta fe gba lowo olorun leyin lo nje kadu agba now listen the christianity of our parents hear me is different from the christianity we are practicing the reason why in our own days we have more results is because we study bible in their own days, they only pray. Now, if some of you know parents, your, your parents are born again, go back home and ask them some things. They don't know it. But they can pray. One leg bad do three hours. Oh, Lenny egg bad. One two months like bad. Oh, Lenny egg bad. Go bad do three hours because he barely can know. To win in spiritual warfare, hear me. And hear me very well. Consistently speak the word of faith in expectation. And what is the word of faith? The word of faith is the written word. Let's confirm more. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. Thank you, sir. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything, how? Okay. If we ask anything, now if this thing is not here, eh? Some people will be praying to ask for ah, oh Lord, I love the car of Miss Dignessa Ledari. Lord, before she goes, touch her to give me that car. Yeah. You know, there was a there was a generation when faith started. People would go to the market and be laying on car. I receive it. I receive it. When the Bible says, let him who does not walk, not eat. You want to receive without walking. Could they walk? Oh, she shared. Oh, very receive. Kill very receive. Some people, I, when I, I went for a program at Abba many years ago, Evan was in that bus with me when we were coming back. And one pastor, he was so full of ignorance, he could not pay for transport. He entered the vehicle. He said, where are you going? I'm going to Lagos. Where's your money? He said, I am going to Lagos by faith in Jesus' name. Ah. Oga, you know, uh, you know he boasts. Oga pay now. He said, I said, I'm going by God said I should go to Lagos. He said, Oga, no be God, get this boss. <laughs> pay now, Oga. Now, you don't get money to pay, you can't sit down. The only help we can do for you is that you will stand. They call it attachment. You will stand till you get to where you are going. Wadu sani boss. So he decided to stand. But he not, where he was standing, he was feeling it. Instead of him to tell the man staying by side the window to open the window, he said, I command you in the name of Jesus, open that window. That one just slapped him. Kosa! If you ask for anything that you want God to do for you, it must be according to his will. What is his will? His will is this thing, the word. Please put that scripture on screen. This is the will of God. This is the confidence we have. When we were praying for children, we were praying according to the word. Father, you said in your word, you bless the man and the woman and you commanded them to multiply according to the scripture that you have written. Lord, your word that says we should multiply. In one of the ways that we have to multiply is to produce children. Father, whatsoever is the reason why we don't yet have a child. If it's for you to leave, you reveal. If it's for you to remove, remove. But lazy Christian thing is just by prayer. I walk on to pray at you in a minute. We we hosted one man of God many days ago. At the host and funny pastors. Pastor Mbani Boon Shimbo. That's why I preach Lodova. Contact said she moto wuja. Moto and was stop. As she was adding anything by a year did a jack dadua. Contact said she a year or time. Uluaja. I want nobody to do any or who call in your neck on that me. We 
we hosted another one too. I just told him to just, I, I finished preaching and he walked in. I said, please close the meeting. And he said, stand up. And he said, and you know God's power member we only have offer. You can, you know, the such things can happen here again. Those were our practical days in the days of doing like practical. Today now, anyone that we are going to invite are people that are going to that are going to build on what we are building. So, for you to win in spiritual warfare, it must be according to His will. According to his will. Please ask. Show me scriptures. Because see, as you are praying, the devil too will be antagonizing you. Say, you don't need a car. Oh, need Latin Mary. Oh, need Latin Mary. reason from the word of God. I want to show you. Okay, let's finish this one so I can show you one practical example from the word. Next verse. According to his will, he hears us. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. If we know that we, he hears us, now we now know that whatever we ask, we receive. Now, something happened in the days of Jehoshaphat. Now, let's read these two scriptures first. Let's read Second Chronicles 7, 12 to 16. 2 Chronicles 7, 12 to 16. Now look at this. This is the covenant of God with Solomon over the temple that he built for God. Let's go quickly. 2 Chronicles 7 from verse 12 to verse 16. Now look at this. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifice. 13. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. Yes. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. 15. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayers offered where in this place. That was the covenant that God made with Moses over the temple that he built. After, no, I said Moses, sorry, Solomon. After Solomon had now died, something now happened. Second Chronicles chapter 20, let's go there, from verse 1. Second Chronicles 20. Three nations now decided we are going to fight Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat now went to that same temple and quoted what God promised. We are going to say it. Let's see. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazan. Hazazan Tama. This is Engadi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. After proclaiming the fast, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town to Judah to seek him because of what they had. Then Jehoshaphat stood where? In the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at where? The temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard. That same temple. And said, O oh Lord God our fathers, of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. And no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before you, your people, Israel, and gave it forever to the descendant of Abraham, your friend. Mufas, they have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name. A sanctuary for your name saying, if calamity comes upon us, what did he quote? He quoted the covenant that God had with Solomon over the house. If calamity come upon us, whether the sword or judgment or plague or famine, or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear us and save us. That's according to the promise you made. But now, here, here are men from Amnon, Moab, Ammon, Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade. When they came from Egypt, so they, they, uh, they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Verse 11. So how, sorry, see how they 
are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Verse 12. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. 13. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the, before the Lord. Verse 14. Then, can you see God? We go respond in your case. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asphah, and he stood in the assembly. Levites don't prophesy. But because there was nobody available around, available around, God had to use anyone that is ready. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but what? Now, what did Jehoshaphat do? He decided to go back to the covenant. Look at what he did to the sons of Skipha in Acts chapter 19. Look for it for me and please put it on screen. The Bible says they came and said, in the name of Jesus Christ that Paul preached. Oh yeah, get out of this man. The demon said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? So many today's Christians, I don't know, I don't know where we missed it in the church. So many children, today's children of God, they rather carry the anointing or it. Hold one handkerchief as man to and put the Bible at home. In our days, if you are not going to be you will be to see knowledge. A man quotes scripture, but I understand it. That's why I see. See, look up. The word of God that will bring you miracle is the word of God whose light you have discovered. Emma, you read the Bible and nobody is there with you. The thing just spark, spike light in your heart. Kai, no, I cannot be barren. Ah, I can, and you stand, and they're asking you, what happened? What happened? No, 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 I cannot be poor. If that word does not make sense to you, it cannot make meaning to your life. Praise God. Are you sure you are, you are getting it at all? Let's take the last one. Let's close. Because I got home very late yesterday. I will sleep very, very late. Last one for in this hour. We continue tomorrow. Listen, look at this last one. The third weapon for victory over the devil. Prevail on the platform of the Holy Spirit giving wisdom. That giving is G-I-V-E-N. Prevail on the platform of the Holy Spirit giving wisdom. I wrote here, there are some victories you will not get Without instructions from the Holy Spirit. Now, you know what I put as bracket under this one? You win by divine wisdom. Number one, your style of righteousness. Number two, your prayer life of the word. And number three, winning by wisdom. Tell me, Mama, to a son. But, Omolon, me, Lulu, Raya, Chibota, and Monsi. How many children of God have time again? Ito yaki to bati jila ro ibito ting, ibito ting brush lo ting badua, ibito ting mola ati we lo ting lo ting shori ofe. Paul le moshi fe bawa solo. Please help us thirteen. They are watching us all over the world.
So we need wisdom from the Holy Spirit. You know why? The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and the Holy Spirit knows what the devil is doing that you cannot see. That's why there are sometimes the Holy Spirit will tap you. You want to buy money, there will just be this hunger for you to pray. And you'll be looking at time. Ah, I'm just tired. Ah, but there's this burden for you to pray. There are times that he puts a burden in you to fast. I was telling my wife today, ah, my fasting, I, I, I started, it was a 45 days fast. It was 47 days tomorrow. Ah, by tomorrow I will finish my fast too. I didn't plan to fast that long. I was just at home and I had that leading. Son, start fasting. And I started from the 17th of January. Don't stop until the next 45 days. Okuntu share me more. But Generation of today's Christian once saw a memo de Oweja. Hello. I want to close. Listen. One thing with the Holy Spirit is that if you are not calm enough to listen, he won't speak to you. But he speaks. But understand, the Holy Spirit speaks eh, using several methods. But one thing I want you to know is that the Holy Spirit will not speak to you with a method you cannot understand. But most times, I will I can pay attention. I am you going to hear me to share the prayer. But because of 30, it's not paying attention to the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit speak? Like I said, use several methods. Don't expect to hear the Holy Spirit the way he speaks to me. So he may not speak the same way to you. Now, me and my wife now, we have different ways. My wife used to hear voice. I've tried to use that method. It didn't work. You hear a voice will tell you to do something and that thing is wrong. You say, go and say, somebody's coming. Nobody will come. I don't know whether it has happened to you before. <laughs> that thing will not fall. It will fall. But me, if I close my eyes like this, I see visions and trance. And it's always clear. Think about Rumiloju, Timati pray, Kesha mighty soon. The dream, by the time I'm saying, my wife will say, This dream, it's, ah, no, 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 this is, this work God is saying. So, Holy Spirit speaks using different methods. In her own case, too, she may look at you. She will tell you what is in your mind. She will say, I just feel it. And when you say, one day I ask, are you a witch? But if me, I open eye, I know they say anything. If you like, dress like the devil, I don't see it. But let me close my eyes. You too, see it is your responsibility to discover how God passed message to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is your responsibility to discover it. It is not God's responsibility to tell you that this is how I'm going to speak to you. And once you discover it, begin to pray to develop it. 
May God give us understanding. Are you blessed again today? Let's finish it tomorrow. 6 to 7.30.